Welcome back to On Base with Mookie Betts. We are here in Cincy with my boy Hunter Green. What's going on, bro? You got to talk into the mic, you know what I'm saying? My fault, my fault. Yeah. Nothing, nothing much, man. I'm you chilling. Yeah. Hey, man, yes, um, when I first seen you, them shades stood out. Like, where you get those? <laughs> These are Louis V. Uh, they're Ooh. called the Millionaires. Okay. I like them. They're my favorite. I lost a pair. I think last year uh-huh. I had to go back and get another pair. I think these are the best ones too. Those are those are hard. Appreciate you. I like those. Thank I you. just had to give you, you know, give you your flowers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, Hunter, <clears throat> you're the fourth fastest pitcher to 250 strikeouts. Did you know that? Yes. Somebody told me that the other day. I I never look stuff up. I I don't really pay too much attention to that stuff, but. Uh, one of our like reporters reminded me of that the other day. So you don't like keep up with like your your numbers as you're going out through the season. I try not to. I mean, like I mean, it's you, the thing. You, you know, know, like you, you know, s- you, you see know where you, are, you see your numbers like everywhere. They'll be on TV. They'll right. be like right. they're constantly in your face. So trying to keep the things that are most important, just the process. You know. Okay. Okay. So and then you know that you have the most hundred mile per hour pitch, pitches in a, in a game, and you broke your own record. <laughs> yeah. So you just out here breaking your own record. <laughs> the top three. Okay, so so you, you knew the how. What's it like throwing a hundred miles per hour? Like, because nobody. I mean, I guess a lot of people do it now, but like not people, as yeah. many times as, as you obviously. So what is it like throwing a hundred miles? Yeah, per hour? Uh, I, I mean, I've been throwing that hard since like my junior year of high school. So I hit 102 when I was a junior. In high school. Okay, let's go back before that. Like, what? What is this? Just what like are you eating? <laughs> straight from this is just straight from God. Like, <laughs> man, he just I, said, Hunter, you gonna throw a hundred from a rip. Here it is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Is that was that kind of man? What it I, is, I, I man, I, I mean, obviously, like having a good throwing program. I feel like I, I learned that pretty early on, having the right people like around me that knew enough about the body. Yep. Uh, Alan Jager being one of them. Uh, you know the J bands. Okay. So, oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. I knew him when I was seven. Went to his first camp, uh, and just like started to understand. Okay, like what's a good throwing program? Obviously, seven years old. I'm not long tossing, right. but like getting familiar what, with like what a, a good solid throwing program looks like. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I got that early on, and then from there, like just continuing to learn more about my body, uh, doing yoga, all that stuff, like coming together. So you wake up and, and do you do you have the short shorts too when you go to yoga? No, I don't do the short shorts. Do I got I gotta wear tights. Tights under. I don't do the the chubs. I don't like <laughs> I don't like the chubs. <laughs> okay, so tell me tell me about like a routine you have you know to to warm that bad boy up because you know what I'm saying you can't just you that's got to get hot before you start throwing a hundred. You know I don't hundred and five. <laughs> I try not to do too much. Uh, I mean, I'm also 23, man. So, like, right. knowing that I'm young, you know, I can, you know, pretty much get out of bed and still feel pretty good. Um, but, yeah, there's a whole routine, you know, getting to the field early enough where I can hop in the jacuzzi um, <clears throat> or the hot tub, go into the sauna, loosen up, not being there too long, though. You know, right. I won't get tired, yep. let it drain me and stuff. So I'll do that, uh, get a good stretch from from our trainers. Um have a little bit of quiet time, you know, listen to some music. What kind of music do you listen it. to? Well, leading up to right before I go out, it's pretty much R&B. I love R&B. And then I'll put some hip-hop on it and go from there. Then you get it cracking before yeah, you, you crack. get on the field. Yeah. R&B a little too. I just like to ease into it and then pick up as I go. So y'all's, y'all's pitching songs, do you interchange that or do, is that just one? I just got one right now. I, I I chose Rich Flex, uh, mm-hmm. you know, by Drake, because yeah. I'm number 21, so I thought it'd be dope. Okay. It came <laughs> yeah. on, I, I played it for, like, one game, and it was terrible. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. like, the, the timing didn't work. You know, the timing's got to yeah. be right. It's got to be uh-huh. at least, like, a yeah. solid two to two and a half minutes yep. where it's like, okay, this is the perfect part of the song. And, like, the, the beginning's fire, and then yep. the rest of the song, like, Nothing. I don't like 21's part. Oh. So, like, I So you I, were I, just, <laughs> you, were, you were off on it. You yeah, I had, to, I had to bang it. So I'd, I have a yay area now by E40. So so why don't you why don't why wouldn't y'all switch every start? Is it like a is it like a? I think it's just too much. Like, it's, it's too much. Yeah, you having got to four like, days, you doing nothing. I know. You I got know. plenty of time to come up with another <laughs> song. Is it superstitious? No, you're right. Is it superstitious? No, it's just I, I don't know, man. I just haven't put like that much energy into it, but. I should. Maybe I'll, I'll think about that now. I mean, you, you know, something. just something to think about. Yeah. 
you know. At least I, I mean, I, I got the best one for sure. Okay, all right. Well, some of, well, some of our other guys got some. Mm. <laughs> right. so a little, little, little too much country. You, okay. Well, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. You need to help them out. <laughs> you need to help them out. So, okay, as we keep going, so we're, yeah. I got a, a game called On Base and Off Base, whether you're in or out. Mm-hmm. So, tell me about this. On base or off base? A, a Skyrosa. A Skyrosa. You know what that is? Is that a drink? No. Sounds like I a thought cocktail. the same thing, but it's not. It's food. A Sky you a Rosa. foodie. Man, I so a Skyrosa is the Skyline Chili. Oh, wow. Oh, with the pizza. With the pizza. Uh, La Rosa's pizza. Yeah. Man, I didn't know that was a thing. They sell this at the ballpark. A guy oh, ate one man, at the ballpark. There you go, right there. Crushing it. Ooh. Man, I'd have to, like, starve myself for maybe a couple of days before I I'm, eat one of these. <laughs> I'm completely off on that. So are you know you what, on- man? To, to be honest, like, Skyline Chili really isn't that bad. I don't think I've had uh, have I had La Rosa's Pizza. I might have had La Rosa's Pizza, but Skyline's not too bad, man. It's It's got a little, like, weird cinnamon-like hint to it mm-hmm. in the chili. But, like, the fresh shredded ch- uh, cheddar cheese on top. With the conies, like the, the hot dogs, yeah. they're actually not too bad. I got to sit here and convince everybody, man, because, like, <laughs> the whole concept, the concept, like, it, it ain't good. Okay, but all right. It, it is good. It tastes good. It tastes good. Yeah, I promise That's you it tastes bad. good. Okay, so what about this? Jimmy Butler in the heat. Do you think that he'll be able to win his ring? Oh, for sure. Uh, you're, you're on. You know, I don't. I don't watch on. basketball too much. I actually went to Game Seven in Boston. We were we were just there. Yeah, tell me about that. That was dope. Uh, India and I went. Uh, had some pretty good seats. Couldn't get courtside, but we we were on the floor. So yeah, clo- that's close, close. Not bad. That's fine. <laughs> that was, those 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 seats were probably super expensive. Crazy. Yeah, we got a good deal, but the, the, it was uh, the atmosphere was dope though. Like. Joey was there. Yep. Rada was there. Uh, Will Benson, who just got to us, was there. Yep. Alexis Diaz, our closer. We had a good group of guys there. And y'all cool. went and just – and that, I don't think that was a good game, though, was it? No, they got they – yeah. they kind of got smacked. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was crazy because people were leaving like 10 minutes left in the fourth. Like, <laughs> I'm like, jeez. Yeah, they were like, let's go Patriots on the way out. I was like, jeez. <laughs> All right, so what about listening to the album on um, Shuffle for the first time? Like the first time you listen to the album – you put it on shuffle. Do you do, you do that, or do, are you a straight guy? No, I go from the top to so, the, to the bottom. You, so man. you're off base on that? Yeah, I'm off base. Off base. Off base, yeah. It's got to be two, from the three. T- yeah, okay. in order. What about uh, you taking your gaming setup on the road? You game? No, I don't, man. I like what? playing video you're games every once in a while. I know, game? bro. I know. You're a big gamer, though, huh? I'm a pretty big gamer. Yeah, yeah. I, I never got into it too much. So what do you? What I got you, like three games. GTA. Okay. Everybody's got to have GTA. Yep. Right. Yeah. Everybody's got GTA. Forza. I love okay. racing games. That's that. Yeah. And what's my third one? And the show. Those uh, are those do are you, the three. Do you play with yourself on the show? Uh, I do. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's cool though. I'm, I'm not even <laughs> tripping. I'm not even tripping. I would too. You know what I'm saying? But I don't really play. What, the what's, show your, what's your game? What's your What's your favorite? It's called Apex Legends. Oh, Apex. Okay. A, you, you've heard of Apex? Heard of Apex. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all in on that. I'm, I'm completely on base on that. That's the only game I play. I, I don't have a whole lot of time to play other games, yeah. to really invest my brain energy in other games. So um, I just do that, and uh, I've actually made a lot of friends. You do, like, the streaming and stuff? Yeah. And, oh, like, wow. the people, I, I, I've they come to games. Yeah. People just – will be online telling me they're coming to games tomorrow or great, great That's game dope. yesterday. So it's super cool. And then that, now nah, those aren't my friends, but I mean, those are just <laughs> people that I run into all the time at games. And then I, I have um, gotten some friends just from being on there. So it's super, it's super that dope. Cool. If you, yeah. Maybe you should think about streaming. Bro. Yeah. I know a couple of uh, people that do. I know, I think Giolito does it too. Okay. Like he's yeah. pretty big on, on the show twi- on Twitch. And so oh, I, okay. I don't, I don't know if it's the show, but, okay. but he's just on, he's on it. Yeah. So yeah. Think about it. So what about, um, on base, off base, Joe Burrow's haircut. His new haircut. I haven't seen his new haircut. You haven't seen it? No. That looks the same as, as it always does. You guys have another picture without the headband? We may not. I, I don't know. I just know y'all. Don't y'all go to the same barber? <laughs> we do go to the same barber. <laughs> yeah. So he, I just. How you know, you know that? I, yeah, yeah. We, we do go to the same barber. So, same so, barber, yeah. so. Uh, I got to be on Darnell. His name is Darnell. Shout out Darnell. Darnell. He's nice with the Clippers, though. Yeah, he, he do. He, he look like yeah, he got, yeah. you, got you right. Appreciate Darnell, that, yeah. we just got to get my boy Joe <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Just 
fade him, fade him up. You know what I'm Too saying? high of a fade? That's why he got the headband on. Yeah, I can't really tell, but, you know, go ahead and get him right, darling. I'm going to be blacklisted from a Bengals game now. Just sitting <laughs> yeah. here talking shit. <laughs> All right, so, bro, going back to, to, to early Hunter, let's go to young Hunter. You were super hyped. You was, you was LeBron coming out. You was on – all the covers of magazines. I mean, you probably had scouts everywhere, right? Like you couldn't. You were famous, young. So how was I don't know that, about man? Famous, but. Yeah, he was famous. <laughs> he was famous. Embrace that. All right. Yeah. Look at yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. There it you is. Baby famous. face. Yeah. Baby face. So so how is that, man? Like that's that's a lot. Cause you, how, what age were you there? I was seventeen. Seventeen. And I was years a senior old. here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and you're LeBron. Like how was that? Uh, it, it was it was crazy, uh, you know. Be, being seventeen, uh, I think I'm the first black high school baseball player on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So that was like my favorite history piece on this Sports Illustrated cover. Um, knowing what that means, the the representation, um, you know, how much substance and. You know, there was in that article, it wasn't just being a baseball player. But at the time, um, I, you know, was coming kind of out of middle school, going into high school. I was speaking Korean. Don't ask me to say anything in Korean, though. Cause <laughs> <laughs> I played the violin a little bit. So, like, all of that was in there. Um, I still paint and draw to this day. It's kind of like my little escape that I do. So, like, mm-hmm. all of that was put in that, that article. And it was cool just to see, like, the holistic part of, of me at that age. Um, was really special. They actually did another uh, cover in Sports Illustrated, but the kids edition with all my paintings on the front. So that was cool, too, to get that that feature. But You've been painting for a long time. Yeah, so, like, my first introduction into into art, my mom taught me calligraphy when I was, like, maybe 10 or 11 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, she got me, like, a whole set, um, and that's when I, like, you know, started to really, like, work on my penmanship and... That was my first introduction to art. And then since then, like, I'll sketch. I got my own sketchbook I'll bring on the road. Oh, you said, okay, you take yeah, it on the road. Yeah, like, do a lot of canvas work nice. uh, on big canvases. So just stuff like that. I did art in high school. I took AP art. loved my art teacher. So, like, he was great, man. So I just stuck with it all the way up until now. And, you know, everybody's got their own little thing. Yeah, dude, you, you going to make some paintings and sell them? Uh, man, people. You might have, as well. <laughs> people have asked me to. Uh, right now, it's still kind of like that sacred time for me to just like get away from the game and and certain stuff. So I haven't really opened it up too much, but I got a pretty good idea on bringing something to to the city. Yeah. That'd be super cool. Yeah. Like you could stream, you could just put a camera up and people will watch that. I'll watch it. You know what I'm saying? I'll watch. I think that's super cool. So people have said that'd be a long live stream though, but Hey, I think what else we doing? We we ain't doing nothing else. (laughs) So, so I got four days. (laughs) Right. Exactly. (laughs) Going back. So back in high school, like, when you went to school and you had, everybody knew you, right? How was that? Like going, being in class, like did you ever feel that was, like that was fire? That was cool. Yeah, but like I wasn't, I didn't go to a bunch of parties and stuff. Like uh-huh. I was so locked in. Yeah, you had to take you care know, of your like, business. But yeah, I'm just like, been like changing classes. Was everybody like, oh, Hunter, <laughs> hey, Hunter? Like did you get all that? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I feel like people you ate didn't that really. Up. I bet you I ate, ate that, that up. up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything at the time, but in my head, I was like, oh, shit. like okay. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was crazy, man. But, like, it was cool. Like, that day that it released, I went out to, uh, I think it was, like, a daily newsstand, uh, kind of, like, right down the street from my high school that I went to. And they had all my magazines there, like, on the shelves. And me and my boy just went right after our baseball practice after school and just, like, cleared the whole entire shelf. It was dope. Mm. So, like, I just remember that. That memory was really cool. And being able to see it in, like, grocery stores and stuff, uh, just special. It's super cool. Yeah. Super cool. So then you got, you were ex- supposed to go number one overall. Mm-hmm. Ended up going number two to Cincy. Did you feel a certain way with it when you went two instead of one? No, I mean, at the time, I, I think knowing the class and, like, all the the rumors and stuff, and there are, you, as you know, just rumors. You never yeah, know right, what a team really right, needs, right, or right. you know, you think that just because the best players are in the draft, they're going to go one one. But if somebody don't need a pitcher and they need someone else, you ain't getting picked right, or whatever right. it is. So, I didn't really understand that part of the game, that the business side of that. Um, but my boy ended up getting picked 
one one Royce Lewis with the okay. Twins. Yeah. We grew up playing together. He's from Southern California, yep. so we played like we did area codes together. I think we did like the perfect game thing together, that that uh, All American game. We did quite a few events together and played each other in high school and stuff. So, uh, really good dude, man. He's kind of had a tough go, but he's back in the big leagues, which is cool to see. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, he, and he's playing well too. Yeah, yeah, he's playing so. well. So you, uh, yeah, you're from up the street. I forgot about that. You are from up the street. So you were you a Dodgers fan growing up? Yes. Big yes. Dodgers fan. Big Dodgers fan. So Not like who, a huge Dodger fan, but, but enough like, of a fan to know. Yeah, yeah, that was my team. Who who was your player growing up? Who was your guy? Rafael for call. He was my was like, guy what? Too. I'd be saying like it was like what? Rafael for call. Yeah, like going to to the game, sitting third base side, watching him go on the five six, jump up, throw. Yeah. It's fire. So you used to go to games all the time? A good amount of games. Good amount of games. Yeah. And traffic, man. Tra- I mean, so it was bad. just like it's so yeah, bad. It's brutal, huh? Yeah, it's hor- it's horrible. So, <laughs> were you like, I'm going to play for the Dodgers one day? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think any kid growing up, like, I can you you just in the mirror, you were you had the Dodgers yeah, the across Dodgers. your chest, <laughs> and you was ready. Man, you know, it's funny. I, I when when my parents like pull photos up when I'm younger, when I was younger, I don't have like any Dodgers gear, like merch or anything. Oh, it's kind of interesting, wow. like. I had a lot of Stanford stuff. I guess I wanted to go to Stanford. <laughs> so I had a bunch of Stanford shirts and sweatshirts, but I never really had, like, any Dodger stuff, which was kind of weird. Well, you just went uh, to games. You enjoyed the games. You weren't, yeah. you, like you said, you weren't, like, a, a fan. A fan, crazy but fan. But you, you just enjoyed. Dodger enjoyed. Dogs. You were, and you were crush guy. Dodger Dogs. Yeah, uh, crush Dodger Dogs. Crush I never Dodger. had one. Yeah. Maybe I should think about it. So <laughs> right. you got a lot of M's when you signed. Seven. Right. Um. What was it like? What was the first thing you bought when you got that? Oh man! Because you were eighteen at this point. I think you I guys... bought some like M and M's or something. No, like, yeah, well, it was... come on, stop. <laughs> okay, it, so... it was like some candy. No, seriously. What like, was I your didn't... first big purchase? Big purchase. <laughs> uh, I got my mom a car. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so Nothing for nice. you though. Nope. Nope. I. Uh... Man, I actually, I moved to Vegas my first two years. I broke my signing bonus up uh-huh. for the two years. I moved to Vegas, 0% state tax. Yep. So I lived there for two years. I was only 17 years old, bro. I couldn't do anything. I was just. Oh, in Vegas? I, yeah. Oh, I lived on the strip. It so was you like were 17 when you signed this? 17. On yep. the strip in Vegas? Yep. I would just go work out, come back to my place and chill. And that was and it. That's. Yeah. You didn't do nothing. So, didn't do nothing. That's and the, crazy. the people that stayed in my place, the it was, I could have gotten into a lot of trouble there. But, but you didn't. You <laughs> had some good people around you. <laughs> Nobody was around. Everybody was in L.A., but, but yes, yeah, so yeah. my parents raised me the right way. Yeah, so good. so then you, you, you missed two uh, seasons, right? Yeah. You, got, you were hurt one year, TJ. TJ in 19. And then in 20... COVID year. COVID year. Just did like the, the alt site. The so what did you do? Yeah, I'll say you, is that the whole year you just did the alt site? Yeah, but I went out there late. I think I missed like the first month of the alt site. I was still training back in L.A. Uh, and then went out there for like the last month, month and a half of the, the year, I guess, the alt site. Yeah. And so what, what was it like missing two years of? Because minor league ball, like I remember for me, it was a grind. But that's where you meet so many people and you you sure. learn who you are because you're on the road by yourself or with a roommate sure you know you don't have your girl with you your family's not with you you know like i, I really got to know who mookie was mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and so like how was it for you since you you know you kind of you missed two years you really didn't get yeah. that opportunity the the toughest part for me was building the workload as a starting pitcher Coming out of high school, I was a shortstop, mm-hmm. like, all four years of high school. I pitched, you'd have to pull the stats, but I think I pitched, like, maybe 50 innings all four years of high school. Oh, wow. So, like, okay. I never had the workload of a starting pitcher coming out of college, mm-hmm. you know, or yeah. a high school pitcher that was a PO mm-hmm. only through high school. I, I played shortstop, and I happened to pitch. So, like, I never built that workload because I didn't go to college, so I right. wasn't throwing the 120 innings for three years or whatever. I didn't do that. And then through the minor leagues, missing those two years, I never got past. The most innings I threw in one season was uh, was 69 innings. Oh, uh, so you didn't even. Yeah, so I okay. never. I think I threw a total of 180 innings or something in, in the minor leagues. Yep. Total. 
So, 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 so that's how cold you were, though. Yeah, but it's like, man, I would have, I kind of would have wished I, I, they held me like for an extra oh, year, wow. to be honest with you, so I can build that. You know, because mm-hmm. like having to figure that out in the big leagues is like how was, nah. is that was that hard to do? <laughs> yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out. Oh, uh, you're still trying. Yeah, to I'm still it trying out. to get that workload and build and um, and all of that, man. I mean, a lot of kids, you know, going through high school youth ball, being mostly pitchers, you know, they learn one the workload, but two, like they learn pitches, they learn change up and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, I had to learn that stuff kind of on the fly. Because you you're yeah. just an athlete that pitched, correct? So you weren't yeah. you your 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 mindset wasn't in a yeah pitching. like pitch philosophy yeah. and like attacking hit like I never I just went and I threw hard so I got away with it yeah. you know and and just went with that and you know obviously like I didn't rely just on my athleticism I right, knew right. that I'd have to figure certain things out but it was so comfortable because I was able to get away with it until getting really to like triple A. Double A, I still got away with it a little bit. There's more prospects, as you know, right. in Double A, yep. and then Triple A, you know, you have more guys that are coming from the big leagues down, so more experience. So like that was like the first time I was like, man, I'm gonna have to throw, you know, other than just throwing 100 plus, I got to be able to move, you know, move you guys, mm-hmm. change I like all that stuff. I I started to figure that out really in like Triple A. So okay, so <laughs> you know, so it's so late. That's really late, and then yeah. now you see you're still learning it now. So. When you, when you feel good, right, you're on the bump, you feel good, I got my stuff today, and you're throwing 100 every pitch, what is it like when you face someone like Arias who's hitting 400? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, is he like, I got to be careful? Or is he like, nah, this, I got my stuff today? You know, because it, it, there, yeah. there is that competitive thing where, like, this guy is really good. You know, no matter what I throw today, he's going to hit it, or no matter – what he throws at it, we're gonna be out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's he's dotting the corners. To be honest so, with you, yeah. like he means he's, going, he's going, going off. I still haven't faced him yet. We played my oh okay year okay this year. So uh, I mean, Acuna, I mean, pick pick a guy. Yeah, yeah. He's going off. You know. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, man, when I feel like my best, when my stuff is there, I truly believe that nobody's gonna right. Nobody's gonna. Touch that's it. a great mindset to have. Like, that's just truly what I believe because I've seen I've faced good enough lineups early on already mm-hmm. where it's like well, when I feel good and when my stuff is on and I'm able to locate it when I want, where I want it, no one, it's going to be a good day. But when I feel a little off or, you know, I'm not, obviously I'm not commanding as much as I'd like to, I got to be a lot smarter, mm-hmm. you know, and yes, yeah, the best pitchers in the game, but it's also the best hitters, you know, so having to make those adjustments, um, but I think it's it's always like a respect thing, but it's not a fear thing, right? No, no, no. So, I'm not saying. Yeah, okay. That, yeah, that that's, that, I'm just yeah, saying yeah, that's yeah. like yeah. that's the mindset. Like, yeah, like Arias and Acuna, man, Whoever the else, best hitters know, in the game yeah. or whatever right now. But at the end of the day, I still have the upper hand if I'm able yeah. to locate, right? You know, and throw right. when and where I want to throw it. So, and and then what's it like? Because I can give a hitter's perspective. Like when we don't have, when I don't feel good today. It's like, all right, well, you know what? I'm just going to go compete. Like, I've hit my whole life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to go compete, try and figure it out as I go. Because some days you don't feel good. Mm-hmm. A lot of days you don't feel good. I mean, yeah. we're humans, yeah. right? And so when you have that start, when you don't feel good, like, what is it that you do? Because for me, like I said, it's just like, I'm just going to go compete, whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, I still have to hit a mistake. You know, mm-hmm. no matter what, I could feel terrible in BP or terrible in the cage. Yeah. And I can go four for four. I, yeah. I remember I had the worst BP I've ever had, mm-hmm. and I hit for the cycle that day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So same we'll, thing with bullpens. Like, okay, there, we'll have yeah, a yeah. terrible bullpen, and then we'll go out there and have a great game. Like, I think you know, it's, it's all a mindset. Yeah, is it uh, hard to switch that mindset? Because you know, like you know, like okay, I'm miss hitting every ball, or yeah. I'm missing every spot. Like, mm-hmm. is it? Is just it, you have to kind of trick yourself. But. I think it was harder last year with not having enough experience. And even though okay. I'm still yeah, in my yeah, second yeah. year, I feel like I have enough of a sample size to pull from last year to be like, okay, I've had this day before. This is not new. How do I tap into this now? Oh, okay, this is what I did last time. Okay, this was my mindset. Okay, this, is, this was my preparation before going out to throw before the game or checking myself after the bullpen. Like, man, that was a terrible bullpen. 
but I do feel good. I'm mm-hmm. just, you know, I'm yanking a little bit too much because I feel too good to where I'm a little too explosive, you know, or whatever it is. And just being able to check yourself and then using the warm up pitches before the inning starts, you know, to lock to, yourself back to in. Get so like that, as you know, that comes with experience. Yeah. And just like, but being like tuned in enough to know that. You know, I'm terrible at talking. It's stuff. all right. It's, so I because I remember CC <laughs> CC would go to the bullpen. You know, you you guys go out early, go to the bullpen, throw probably ten to twelve pitches, and then he was walking in, yeah. and I'm like, you know, how? Well, <laughs> you're not even really warm. He's like, man, look, Experience. no matter how good or bad I do out there, I'm just warming my arm up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the game is gonna be the game. But to yeah. your point. He had experience with mm-hmm. it, so he already knew what it was. So 100%. you, so growing up, you had a really good, you had really good people around you. Obviously, had good parents, and, and you, the, you were in this the youth program at, at seven years old. How was that? You were playing with a, a in Compton, yep. especially. So yep. you were around us. Yep. You know how how was that being around us at seven years old? Because when I was seven years old, I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I, that, yeah. It just wasn't. I, I'm, I'm from Nashville. I didn't have sure. the Compton like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how was that? Man, I, uh, being able to go to the youth academy, that being the first youth academy started by the Dodgers and the Angels, uh, was super special. I dealt with a lot of racial issues at the league that I was a part of prior to going to the youth okay. academy. Um, so I didn't get any playing time, really. Um, I would hear a lot of racial you know, slurs yeah, and sure. you know, uh, stuff that's experienced by you know, a lot of kids, unfortunately. But... Uh, my, my dad, my parents, you know, were locked in enough to put me into another position and, and know that, okay, the youth academy is a place that will welcome my son, uh, will want to see my son do well, will invest the time. Uh, they had some amazing coaches that were already there, current players and uh, ex-players, and then guys that were just about to get drafted. So when I started at the academy, uh, Anthony Ghost. Aaron Hicks, Dom Smith, J.P. Crawford, uh, and a few other guys. But those are the four that I can name uh, were, were there about to get drafted. So, oh, wow. Okay. Like being behind them, watching J.P. take ground balls, mm-hmm. Dom hitting, Aaron hitting. And I think Anthony and Aaron were still like pitching because they're really pitchers mm-hmm. coming out. Coming okay. out of high school. They were throwing like 100. Wow. I think they were okay. the best like <laughs> pitching prospects coming out of high school. Uh, so like seeing those guys, you know, every day going to the academy, which mind you was like an hour and a half drive yeah, for me from, every time yeah. going out because it's mm-hmm. you know Compton, Long Beach, out that way, traffic, traffic like yeah. <laughs> having to good. yeah having to deal with that and uh, but man it was a blessing because I was exposed to not just our people but the Latin community, the Asian community, and being able to see all of that, see all of us come together and play the same sport. And, you know, eat lunch together after, you know, days of practice. It was just, it was really dope to look back and see that. And I've done a lot of work at the academies, uh, specifically that one. I've done a couple camps there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's all love to this day. I mean, I still talk to all those guys, all the coaches. And uh, just, just a blessing, man, to be able to, for my parents to put me in that position. Yeah, I was going to say you shout know, out to like, our parents yeah, because, 100%. you know, my, my mom and dad always gave me, the best opportunities in everything, yes. right? And so everything I got, I, I made the best from being in the best opportunity. My, I was around the best coaches, around the best players. I had to play up, you know, just yes. to get better competition and stuff yeah. like that. And so, you know, shout out to our parents for, yes. for giving us that, uh, that, uh, that op- opportunity. Shout out to you. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like learning how to sit. My pops taught me how to sit, playing up, oh, okay. sat on a team. Like, just dealing with that adversity, like, okay, yeah. like, you might not be the best player on the yeah. team every time. I, and I just, so, like, yeah. you got to sit today. You got to learn. It's <laughs> like life lessons, you yes. know what I'm saying, that we would always have to use. Yeah. So, go, going forward now, you si- just signed a little a six-year deal. Oh. Shout out. Congrats. Shout Thank out you. to Hunter Green for it. What made you want to sign here, though? Like, what, what was it that here? Yeah, man. Um, I think I saw just the – seeing the guys coming through the minor leagues, like yeah. – you guys saw Ellie last night, yeah. like being able to see dudes like that. McLean that just came up with the yeah, short, yeah, short yeah, shortstop. Right um, I mean, we got a couple other dudes. Uh, Encarnacio Strand that's in AAA. Uh, you got some guys. Noel v. Mar- yeah, man, we got we got a good group of players coming up that really exciting to watch. So like seeing that, yeah. They, 
Right, and he, he hit, hit, like he hit a ground out. I think that was one twelve. He grounded out one hundred nine yeah. yesterday. I'm like, what? Well, it's funny because I think of like O'Neill Cruz. That that dude, yeah. everything yeah. he touches is like one hundred and ten plus. Yeah, you know, and like same build. I didn't think that ball was that high, and then I went back and oh, saw from no, that bro. angle. He's like Tony he's hit like his six, spot. Seven. Yeah. No, he threw a good pitch. Yeah, it was a good pitch. Yeah, <laughs> so good I was pitch. like, Double. I thought it was a little too middle in real time when I was watching, and then I went inside from that angle. I'm like, oh, that was up, up. Yeah, boom. And he you know, so so there, so oh, you geez. believed in in what we had come well, what you had coming. Yep, yep. So that um, already, man. I've done so much. I feel like in this community, from when I was drafted, uh, I've done work at the academy here, uh, the Reds Community Fund, just doing stuff throughout the city, uh, speaking at high schools. Like I already felt like I was pretty embedded within the community here. Um, early on from when I was drafted and then just going through, you know, the minor leagues and coming through the city for, like, Reds Fest. We have, like, our fan fest yep. that we do in, the, in December here. Uh, you know, I already felt like I was pretty well connected within the community. And knowing that, you know, I'll still be, I think, 20 – I'll be 29 at the end of the career. I'll be so going into free agency. Yeah. That's, a, and, that's still a good idea. Yeah, yeah, knowing that, you know, I was able to get some extra money before that and mm -hmm. having another bite at the apple, like, all of that stuff – um, but really, like, the excitement of bringing winning back to Cincy. Like, okay. man, we had such a great history here. Yeah. Big it was, machine, a, good, it like, was a good crowd yesterday, too. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't bad. I yeah. mean, like, for being in Cincy, they want to see Ellie. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm sure when you pitch, they come. So, like, giving back to the community is, is super huge for you, what I'm seeing. Like, because, you know, you want to be in Cincy and bring winning back here. So what is it, what is it that you feel that you could – do for the the younger kids especially african-american but all younger kids yeah to uh to grow the game or to grow your brand or not even your brand the baseball brand or or, or whatever you want to say in that vein yeah I, I think the most important thing and you know you can attest to this is is being able to is being accessible to the kids like kids knowing that okay mookie might have the same kind of upbringing as i did mm -hmm. or you know he oh man he he deals with those struggles too like even now like stuff like that and and being able to humanize yourself uh and to you kids do by just going to talk to them yeah yeah or just like yeah meeting them and mm -hmm. like having the one-on-one -on -one interaction then being able to like dap you up or like just that interaction man i think goes so far you know because when i was younger watching guys on tv you see all the stardom you see the lights the cameras and it's like is that real like can i attain that like is this is this even a real person? Mm -hmm. But if you can have that interaction, sit down, you know, maybe it's a little Q and A or whatever the you know the event is that you do, being able to have that that human element, you know, um, and be able to relate to the kids, I think is really important. So, anytime I, I have a chance to connect with some kids, or you know, there'll be like a group out in center field mm -hmm. during BP, you know, being able to go over and just say what's up or sign for them or you know answer some questions. I think that goes a, a, a long way. So do you go back home in the off season, or do you, or do you kind of hang around? you kind of do both? Yeah, so I actually just got a place in Arizona last year okay, after the season. Arizona. So that's where my residency is. That's where I live. But because it's so close to L.A. Yeah, like, you still go home. Yeah, my family still So there, when so. you go home, do you go to the youth academy, or do you do things while you're at home? No, I'm, I'm like bougie now, man. I go to UCLA. Oh, and just... oh you bougie now. That's all right, though. No, that comes with it. That comes with man, it. Man, I haven't um... been to the academy in the offseason other than, like, my camps. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll go to – UCLA is just a lot closer, and that's where I was committed. So, like, mm -hmm. I know the guys there. Savage is a great pitching coach, so I'll still talk to him about some stuff. But Do you uh, help those guys as well? Like talk to or not help, but like talk to those guys. I, I a lot have, of it's man, gonna be a men, like a mentality, though. I feel like when when I help younger people, it's, yeah. it's a lot of his mentality because it's mm -hmm. hard to really help physical. Yeah, but it, it's weird because I still feel like I'm too close in age. Oh, like I feel so, like I'm sunning them. Like if I, if I'm like telling oh, them wow. something, I feel like I'm like like especially last year, 22, like 21, going into like AAA, and so like 20, it's too close in age. So I felt kind of weird. Like some guys would ask me some stuff. Mm -hmm. But I would feel weird, like, giving them advice because it's like, bro, like, we're almost the same age. Yeah. Like, but we really are. So like, you're, yeah, you're 100 green in the big leagues. And I get it. <laughs> it is weird. But they would love to hear from you. Yeah. yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Like, you're a peer. A lot of times, the best teaching comes from your peers. Someone like, closer, yeah. Someone closer. Yeah. Like, I, a lot of hitting coaches. I've had some really good hitting coaches. Mm -hmm. And, like, right now, I feel like my, uh, my hitting coach is – if if he's not the best in the big leagues, he's at least top three in the big leagues. Yeah. 
but my main hitting coach is really JD. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and he's closer in my age, and not that our hitting coach is old, but mm-hmm. right, he's just he relate. I can relate yeah. to him. You know, he's and right that was there, built so. from Boston too. When you that guys was from Boston, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. so that chemistry. Is so so. I, I say that to say maybe for you, you know, you mm-hmm. give him one or two little things. And see, because you're yeah. definitely not selling. You're Hunter Green, bro. Oh, they're, they're gonna they're gonna be like, man, I'm, man, I'm I'm just as old as you, man. No, they're gonna give me shit. Yeah, but, <laughs> but <laughs> and I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna, th- I'm gonna think about this conversation. I'm be like, man, Mookie said that I should say something. Yeah, say something, <laughs> say something. They they not they not throwing. I don't even know how many hundred mile power pitches you've thrown in the big leagues. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They're not taking the ball until you guys day. do that. You are gonna listen to me? No, <laughs> don't don't do it that way. But I say that to say, like, you're Hunter Green, dog. Yeah. They would love to listen to you. Yeah. They would love. To. So, so yeah, that, that's where I'm at in the. I'll, I'll go if I go back. I'll go to UCLA. And, and okay. And so, did you have a, a good relationship with Joey Votto? Tell me about Joey Votto because I, I don't really know about him. I get on base and I talk to him, and I'm like, I, I, I can't get a read. Interesting stuff. Yeah, like Joey, where did you even <laughs> think of that, dog? Man, he's. Um, one, he's an he's an outstanding teammate. Uh-huh. Um, someone that you know you, you'd want him, you know, as a teammate in the clubhouse. Um, you know, we don't have, man, we don't really have like a lot of vets. We have Will and we have Joey right now, and Joey's obviously in AAA rehab and trying to get back. But he's been popping in and out uh, up here just because Louisville's so close to right. AAA, and so that's been nice to still have him here as much as he can be, but. Um, super intellectual dude, like really, really smart. Um, is really good at chess. Really so he good just at like chess. it's how his mind works. I feel like he's yeah. like constantly like he's always thinking about something. Uh, but yeah, he he does be saying some some silly stuff. He be saying some silly stuff. So <laughs> I got a game for us. It's called Vado or Nato. All right. <laughs> I feel like it's gonna get me in trouble. Go Maybe. Ahead, go ahead. Well, whatever. It is what it is. So. Um, if it's, if you think it's something Joey Votto said, Votto. Okay. Not Nato. Okay. Are these from your, 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 uh, on base com- combos or these are just like random? Uh, no, this is, this is something random. Is random. Yeah, it's something random. You know, so. All right. I legitimately would like to drive a yellow bus when I'm older. I want to either be a crossing guard or drive a yellow bus. Yeah, that, that, that's Votto. You know, he, he did, he did like a whole segment on this. I, do you know about I didn't hear about this. I think he drove to Louisville on the, in in the, the school bus. bus and just pulled up. So, but he's, fire, he's a though. really good teammate, though. He's, he's really great good teammate. at baseball. Yeah. But he's he just drove like, the he does bus. some He does dope stuff. Like, he just, like, he'll wear, like, he'll wear, like, Vans, just like a regular tee and, like, some, like, loose pants. He'll look homeless. But so, Joey Votto is the definition of keep everybody guessing. Like, keep, keep it. Guessing. Yes. That's, man, that's a great way to put it. That's Joey Votto. That's Joey. That that tells me a lot. That tells me everything I need to know. Yeah. Keep so next time I see Joey, don't know what to don't, expect. Yeah. Just 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 keep an open him. mind. Yeah. Whatever. Can just, he just may hit you with anything? Up. Yeah. Because okay. he'll see he'll see some wild stuff. Okay. So what about this? Ninety percent of this game if is half mental. That sounds like something Joey would say. It probably Lotto. is something Joey would say. He, did, he didn't say that. You have, you have, you have you thinking, man. He'll say something, you'll be like, yeah. He'll be like, <laughs> what? Right. Okay. Um, What about this? I didn't know I got hurt. I just thought I stunk. Say it one more time. I didn't know I got hurt. I just thought I stunk. Stunk like stunk like, stunk like, okay yeah, yeah not, okay. I, I, not like funky stink like wasn't good stink. Uh, I'll go with Nato. Yep, he said it. He said, <laughs> he said I didn't know these, I got all hurt. These are <laughs> how you didn't know you did? How you didn't know you got hurt? Stunk. I just stunk. thought I stunk. It is, okay, so what about this? <laughs> I can remember a sports writer asking me for a quote, and I didn't know what a quote was. I just thought it was some type of soft drink. Uh, yeah, like he would say something like that. <laughs> no, you are so bad at this game. <laughs> you are just terrible at this game. But but that's what I'm saying though. Like you never know. Yeah, like, yeah he's you'll keeping just you guessing. Like, you guess it. Yeah, exactly. You, I'm you, guessing right now. But then, like he would say something like that. No, okay. <laughs> Joe Dimaggio so said that's a, that's a natto. All right. So what about this? 
I just want I just want the games to be faster. Most restaurants close around 9, 10 p.m. It's hard to make a reservation and make it if you're playing three and a half playing a three and a half hour game. See, like he would say that, but he can get he has so many connections. Like he can keep restaurants open. Yeah, he did say it, and he can he can keep. So I don't know That's why. Yeah, but it's Joey Vada. He, he may just not. Or he might just bang it and just go back to the crib. Dang. So so and just cook. He had and he. Where is he from again? He's from Canada. He's from Toronto. Toronto. Mm-hmm. From the toe. From, from Toronto. Toe. It's a great city. So uh, one last one. I was yelling to my teammates, I don't want to hit anymore. Somebody ended. And I meant it. Not because I didn't get hits, but because I wanted to go get some fried chicken. That's not a... Don't tell me he said that, bro. Joey Votto said that, No, bro. he didn't. <laughs> when, yeah, that's when did he that, say this? I don't know when he said it. <laughs> But it sounds oh, like some man. of you, like, I've had a couple interactions with him at first base. <laughs> and I just, I wasn't sure. I loved him, though. Like, you know uh, what I'm saying? I wanted no, to keep great. getting on first yep. and, uh, and, uh, and talk to him. But like, I wasn't, uh, I didn't know what to expect. And, you know, sometimes I met him, in, I remember meeting him in AAA. What was your first experience like when you met him? Man, what was our first? <sighs> I can't remember what our first encounter was. It was probably when. I think it was when I was drafted in 17 and like probably just said spring training or something in the weight room yeah, random. and I was just like super quiet and he was just like, Hey man, like whatever that, I think that was like our first. So our first do you, do you have any other people like on other, I guess the Bengals, what other sports are here in Cincy? That's it's the Bengals and it's the FC team. Well, I want to go you, see some soccer. Do you do you do you know any of those guys? I don't know anybody with the FC team. I've been to, to any games, so I haven't like interacted with the team. But I've met quite a few Bengals guys. I've been to I think just two games. Uh, but man, we have them come like all the time to the stadium. I actually think that they're hitting BP today. Oh wow! From okay. like three thirty to like four, like they're hitting BP on our field. Oh wow! So like we do a lot of stuff with with the Bengals. Um, I wish that they were more open to doing stuff with us. Mm-hmm. I'm putting well, that you out can there. Hear, you can I hear hope the, you guys post this too. Yeah, yeah. We, we, you're need, here to crack to, that mold. Yeah, they, they need to you know open what I'm saying? it up. So maybe, maybe, but maybe you got to take the initiative. Maybe you got to just go do too much. Maybe you got to go to more games and show more support, and maybe they'll tap back in with you. That's right. Whoever the players' relation guy is, there is. Well, we, we now, <laughs> now you got to do your part in it. He, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You just got to go and, no, you're right. you know what, and, and bring them to you. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Because it would yeah. be cool. You, Hunter Green, you here for the next six years. That's what I'm saying. You're going like, to be wanna, that dude. We got to be tapped in with the other sports teams. Tapped in with the sure. other sports teams because that's important, especially when you being 100%. in the community because y'all can do things together. 100%. All right, so I got some fan questions okay. uh, from Instagram. First is how would Hunter try to get Mookie out? Yeah, you don't have to face him. Well, you no. Know, you don't have to. We can't do that. We can't do that. Why but, uh, No, actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, 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 no. We, no. we play you guys, and so I don't want to do that. I'm going to save that. It's already my, enough my trying to hit 100. Day. So, uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah. Tips okay. on Any way. tips on throwing hard as hard as. Man, this is the most common question. Yeah, so I feel like oh, I, I want, I'm, I'm not answering for you, but I do have a thought on that. Okay. Like. Things like that question is what hurts, not hurts, like it makes it hard for me sometimes to go help people because I do want to, I do want to help people. Yeah. But I don't want to think, want them to think that I'm going to make yeah, them meet. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like. So, do you, have you ever experienced that? Like, I can't really tell you how to throw a hundred. Like, I can just maybe help your cleaning. I mean, clean yes. up your uh, yeah, uh, yeah, mechanics, your mechanics or, whatever. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I don't. I've never thought like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna change this person. This person is. <laughs> this person's gonna hate me because they're not throwing a hundred, you know, miles right. per hour. Yeah. And it's you that know that would be, be wild, right? But um, yeah, I mean. It, it is tough, like, like you said, like you, you're trying to make somebody better, but at the same time, like you know that one little tip or one little thing isn't going to do that. It's years of you know dedication and practice and um, and, and work. So, and a lot of people, as you know, aren't down to put that work in. You know, so um, 
that's us looking from it, looking at it from our lens of knowing yeah. like you know the work that is. So let's flip it and put in, in their ends. How how would you how would you what would you say for that question? Like, is there any tips? Yeah. To throw as, throw as um, as you can? I mean, man, doing as much. I love doing yoga and Pilates. Right now, I do Pilates more than yoga. Um, do you do you that know, during time under, too? Yeah, like we have a Pilates instructor. Actually, used oh. to be with the Dodgers. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, but she's with us at all of our home games, and then on the road, she'll go on some road trips, which is dope. So being able to have access to her has been great. Time under tension, being able to like hold poses um, and certain exercises for a long amount of time, or you know having resistance and being able to hold it. Building strength like that um, is super important, but being explosive as possible, like training as an infielder, mm-hmm. being a pitcher, but training as you know a shortstop, as or training as, like as an athlete, made me that much better of a pitcher. Being able to fill my position, playing other sports, but, I'm assuming helped as well. You know, what, man, I didn't play other sports. I want to talk any... to you about that though, because I know oh, you'd be, be balling. I thought I, I could have sworn you was a, a DN or something <laughs> coming, That's, bro, sacking my, QBs. My brother, because I was to trying here. to give you the water. <laughs> Yeah, I never. My parents never put me anything. My pops played football, but he dealt with all the injuries and okay. didn't want me to deal with like the back and neck stuff. Uh, but yeah, just baseball. So, what did but, you do to stay athletic then? I just. I mean, I was a short. I mean, I had. I just trained as a shortstop. Trained. I, I don't know. Like, so that's I, a great question. I never. <laughs> you just said, "What'd you do to train as a as an athlete?" I, I don't know. I just. You just did. Just ran, and my pops put me. My pops put me with a, a running coach when I was like maybe 12 or 13 about to go into my freshman year of high school Mm -hmm. to get my running down because I'm a size 15 shoe Mm -hmm. now but I was like my age was always my shoe size like I it was just (laughs) it was awkward like I was just this little like baby giraffe and uh, trying to figure out like you know how am I gonna grow into my body you know how to have a good running form so when I did grow into my body like I didn't look funky you know and I picked up speed and all that stuff so I think that helped, like being exposed that early, and yeah. So you had the, so pops, your, your folks really, really. Yeah, I was. Make blessed. sure you. Uh, yeah, they spent a lot of money on making sure that yeah, I was. Tell them thank you. I'm sure you did, but in. just always tell them thank you, man, because yeah. the parents, you know who you uh, who you grew up around is who you're gonna be like, and so your folks, 100%. your folks did it right. So let's go to another question. Who is the, who is your dream batter to face? All time. Like all of like all time. I've been doing a lot better against lefties this year, so I, I would say uh, I'd say Griffey. Griffey, be able to face. Yeah, Griffey. yeah, that'd be cool. I yeah. want to. I would. I, I hope he watches this because I want to. I want to. I'm gonna talk to him. I know he's gonna talk things. so much. Yeah, he's gonna talk so much. <laughs> you got to, you know. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool having him. I, I was saying like that. That was super, super dope having him, and he, he his mental his mental side was well. That, that's what I learned from the most yeah. is the mental. And and because it, like realistically, he can't t- tell me how to hit like him. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. as King Griffey Jr. I heard that about Barry Bonds too. Like him trying to explain to people, like he just be like, yeah, just like just, just turn this. on it. Yeah, just turn on. And it. And it's like, and what? you know, for him, they probably did just turn on. Yeah, it, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but for us, like it doesn't make sense. Yeah, you know. And yeah. so, um, but I, I would I would like to see that. I would yeah. like to see that because. No, you know, yeah. whatever. But that boy Either way, it's going to be entertaining. Like, yeah. If have he you, gets yeah, one off you, me, he's got that swing. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a strikeout, like, a, a, a thing you do when you strike people out? No, nah, man. I'm, you know, I, I haven't. You know who my favorite, so like, strikeout celebration is Ooh. Luis Castillo. You see his where he just, like, it'd be great if you guys pulled up Luis right now. Just well, he throws and he, like, turns around and just, like, puts yeah, he does. He does the tiger, the tiger Woods. It's so fire. He was with us. I, being able to <laughs> pitch with him last year a little bit before he went over to Seattle, man, it was so fun to watch because it was just, like, it was automatic. It was so smooth. Like, he knew that he was going to strike somebody out before he did it. So he – Yeah, there was no hesitation. Just, like, he if like he throw, holds it just right in front of him. But, like, walks he, like, just... spins and, does, like, he'll finish, and then he'll spin on, like, his, his front toe and then just – a silent is fire. Like, I love watching it. Well, you got to come up with a thing. I know. I know. You got to come up. We got we to gotta get you loosened up a little bit, dog. You in the big leagues. I think the toughest part is, like, I know I got to go out there inning after inning after inning. Mm-hmm. So, like, doing something wild and, like, the, nah, the first something subtle. Like, 
Just something subtle. You'll come up with it. It'll hit you. It'll hit you. Yeah, something yeah. real subtle. I feel subtle. like it'll find me. So we got another, uh, we got another question. What are yeah. your plans after the MLB? Do you have any? That's Man, a tough if, question, especially being so young. If I'm blessed to have the career that I want to have, I don't want to answer to nobody. Mm-hmm. I just want, I want to post up and travel. I love food. I love traveling. I love new experiences. I just want to be able to go do whatever I want and not have to answer to anybody and just enjoy my life with my family and chill. So what, what's one of the best restaurants you've been to? Um, like, do you, do you not, do you go to restaurants when we're on the road? Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, what's, like, yeah, what's the, the ring best one? Like, the hey, ring, let's go. Ring. Like, we're going, okay. we're going so what, what's one of the best restaurants? Um, man. Cause I'm thinking like, okay, ambiance or like food or like everything, everything, everything. Uh, I really liked Soto Soto in Toronto. Toronto's got a lot of dope restaurants. Yeah, it was like a very mafioso, like small Italian restaurant. Just like everybody knows each other. Mm -hmm. A little two-story, like I had a risotto that was like this big. It was really, really good. So, so there is a, I cannot think of the name of that steakhouse in Toronto is it in like a like blue blue something or I'm not sure it's in like a castle or it's like in a, a house or a castle yeah is something it? like that but I don't remember the name of it okay golly okay what's another one what about in uh in uh, Chicago have you been to any restaurants there that's one of my favorite cities. New York New York New York obviously yeah. I, I like Chicago though more of the food scene in Chicago than wow. New York I don't know, like, why, but it's just, like, it feels more, Chicago feels a little bit more homey, because yep. I don't know if it's just a little, it's smaller than New York, you know, but it still, like, feels like a big city. It's wild to think that's in the Midwest. I know. Like, Chicago. <laughs> yes. You think of, like, the rest of the Midwest, like, Chicago? Yeah, like, Chicago. Random. Uh, Alinea. I really liked Alinea. Dope. I've yeah, been there. Yeah, yeah. I've been there. Super, super yeah. dope. I went last year. I took uh, Justin Dunn and I. is another okay. picture yeah. with us. Uh, we took our one of our head trainers and our Pilates instructor just as like a thank you, like end of the season. It was like our last road series and took them out and, and enjoyed that, man. So that was cool. Trying to do more like Michelin star restaurants. Yeah, and, like, I love Michelin. Okay. okay. So so any every city you go to, you try and hit a restaurant. Yes. If you can. Yep. Yep. Okay, so well, I'm trying to get better with that, man, because like it's hard, it's like, but it's just like eating and like gaining yeah. weight, like, you know, the food on the plane. Yeah, you got be the food at the feet. Like mm -hmm. I'm the opposite, though. I'll lose weight because I just don't eat. Yeah, it's hard. It, it's hard for me to, to eat. So wrapping up. Super dope. You're super dope, dude. I'm super happy to see, especially a brother. You personally have so much success. Um, you know, especially in this city, which you, you're bringing winning back, you're bringing everything that you need to do. Shout out to your parents. Um, I do want to meet them one day. Um, and for those who don't know where to cut, catch Hunter Green, you can probably here soon. You could probably catch him on a stream <laughs> painting with a do rag on because them <laughs> waves are fantastic. Oh, we'll man, see you guys with next the 360, episode. 360 waves. <laughs>